In this video I'm going to go over some of the things we may see with equilibrium reactions. And so the question I posed here is if this reaction is at equilibrium, what happens when the following events take place? And this reaction is the uh, reaction with hydrofluoric acid with water. <coughs> but it really is common to all equilibrium reactions. They're all going to behave this way when you adjust concentrations and remove products or remove reactants or change the pH if it's um, got a pH sensitive molecule in it, which this one does. H3O plus is the um, hydronium ion. That's the acid that exists in water and it's going to be the controller of pH in the system as well as change based on outside pH changes. Okay, <clears throat> so in basically any time that you see H3O plus or OH in an uh, equilibrium reaction, if you see a question related to pH, this is going to be the molecule you're you're going to be looking for and the molecule you're interested in. All right, so let's go through these four scenarios. If the concentration of HF is lowered, so if we start off with a situation where we're at equilibrium and the concentration of HF is lowered, that means we're removing a reactant. Okay, and if we remove a reactant, the equilibrium will shift towards the place where you removed it. So, if the concentration of HF is lowered, equilibrium will shift towards reactants, which in, in essence is towards HF. And again, that's to balance the loss of HF. Okay, if the concentration is lower, that means that this has been removed. And so in order to counterbalance that, the reaction will shift back towards the place where there was more HF, but now has been taken away. What else is going to happen in this case? If we shift towards the reactants, um, the concentration of H3O plus is going to go uh, or sorry, go down, and the concentration of F minus will go down. So these are two other things that will occur. Concentrations of H3O plus and F minus will drop. The reason why they'll drop is because these two will be reacting together to produce more HF to account for that loss. Okay, so anytime you shift the equilibrium in one direction or the other, the direction away from where you're shifting it, those molecules or those um, substances will go down in concentration. In the place toward where you're shifting it, those substances will go up in concentration. All right, so on to the next one. If the pH is raised. So if the pH is raised, what does that really mean? Well, if the pH is raised, that means, really should put a bracket here. This means that H3O plus goes down or the concentration of H3O plus goes down. So um, effectively we're removing H3O plus in this case. If I raise the pH, I'm going to be removing H3O plus. So the reaction or the equilibrium will shift towards the products. Equilibrium will shift towards the right which is the products. That means that HF and H2O will both drop in concentration. 
So HF and H2O concentrations will drop. Okay. Next one, if F minus is removed, F minus is a product. If F minus is removed, then the reaction will do the same thing that it did here. It will shift toward the products. So if F minus is removed, equilibrium will shift towards products. Towards the right or products, either way. And um, HF and H2O concentrations will drop in the same manner, just like with this one. Okay. So next one and the last one is if F minus is added. This means if F minus concentration is increased. <clears throat> so if we're adding in HF, or sorry, if we're adding in F minus, that means that the equilibrium will shift toward the direction where we're not adding something in. So it will shift toward the reactants. Because by adding in F minus, we are causing the equilibrium to be out of balance. Equilibrium says that there's a certain amount of F minus, certain amount of H3O plus that should be in the system, and there's a certain amount of HF and H2O that should be in the system. If you add more additional F minus, you've put that out of balance, so to counteract that, the equilibrium will shift away from where you added it. So the answer to this one is going to be equilibrium will shift towards reactants, which is to the left. Okay? Which means, by adding in more F minus, that means that my H3O plus will actually drop. So H3O plus concentration will drop. And that's because here it's being consumed. So uh, by adding in the F minus, I'm causing the equilibrium to shift to the left. That means I'm increasing the rate at which I'm producing the reactants. But in order to produce the reactants, I have to have something to react. So F minus reacts with H3O plus, which effectively causes a loss in the concentration of H3O plus, or a drop in the concentration of H3O plus, because this reaction going in the left direction will take place, will actually have a higher rate than the reaction going to the right, because I've, I have put the equilibrium out of balance. So it's got to get back in balance and in order to do that. This reverse reaction, the reaction to the left, will be uh, predominant. So it will cause a drop in the concentration of H3O plus. So H3O plus concentration will drop and concentrations of HF and H2O will increase. Okay. All right, I hope that makes a little bit more sense on the equilibrium front. And we won't deal with any other changes to conditions than just concentration. But it's important that you know how H3O plus fits into the equation in terms of pH. And then when we talked about the blood buffer system, how breathing fits into the um, blood buffer system with CO2. But this just, the, the, the underlying fundamentals of equilibrium are expressed here in this problem. And it can apply to any situation. You just have to understand whether you're adding reactant or taking away reactant or adding product or taking away product. All right.